Okay, so since uh, since I set it up last, I've done the threat level on this. So it is possible I can adjust the bridge height uh, for the strings. It's, 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 it feels pretty decent as it is, but maybe I can take it a tad lower. Yeah, possibly, possibly, possibly not, but I'll have a check and see just what it's saying. So you just basically go down the, the frets and to tell you the truth, we have got a bit of a rattle. But let me just backtrack first because what I failed to do was check the bridge. Yeah, that, that bridge is, is just floating. Uh, which um, which I, I needed anyway, so that's probably in the correct position. Uh, if we'd have done this and then moved the bridge, it would have been pointless doing this. So, um, we do have some buzz there. So, I actually need to, to raise the, the bridge a little bit just to, to get rid of that. And it might be sat slightly different uh, because it's been off. Possibly just still a little bit of a buzz down this bottom end. Um, each time uh, we do this, uh, each time we alter the bridge, it's going to affect the actual tune as well. So um, it does pay to keep going back, retuning it after you've altered the bridge each time. A bit of a rattle there, but I'm not sure it's from the actual frets. Seems like it's coming from from something else. Uh, anyway, I'll just drop that back down a little bit because when I took it up, I didn't. Um, didn't uh, retune. Okay, so again. I don't think that's too bad. The uh, the height's perfectly playable there. So basically now just doing that on the on each string. Um, just check the tunes correct first because they are new strings and they they're stretching all the time um, at the moment.
Let's see how far these gone out there. Okay, so back to the A. No buzz there, uh, so I can take this down a bit closer to the fretboard, and it's just basically <clears throat> um, keep taking it down until it does start to buzz. So you do get some buzz somewhere along the fretboard, and then just inch it back up till the buzz goes, and that's probably the uh, optimal position and again nothing there so there's still a little bit of room to manoeuvre taking the uh, these um, saddle bolts anti-clockwise drops the saddle and clockwise um, raises it if that's not stating the obvious but a little bit how hard you twang the strings so I'm not going to take that I'll just bring that up a little bit because as I twang the strings a little bit harder I'm getting a little bit of buzz there I think that's about that's about where that one's gonna have to be. Yeah, so just in case continuing each string here uh, doing doing the same thing, tune it up to the right correct tension first. Maybe better doing this when the strings have been on a a while and, and they've they've stretched themselves rather than doing it with new strings but So that can drop down a little bit. Yeah, I'm going getting some buzz there, so that's the point where I just need to take it back up. Just a quarter of a turn time measuring each one of the bolts on on the saddle as well not just not just the one and we've still got a little bit further down there as well so just bring it up a little bit more again.
Might be a little bit just down there when when you play a little bit harder. So I think I'll leave it at that. I think that's acceptable. Onto the G string. Just take that one up a little bit because I'm getting some buzz as it is. Seems okay. Into the B string. that one a little bit so I'll finish this off camera just do the last uh, couple of strings and then we'll come back and look at the intonation okay so I've got the action down um, as low as uh, I can and what we need to be looking for now, because the fretboard is radiused, um, if we end up with um, the, the strings in a, in a similar manner, once we've got them down as, as, as low as we need or to whatever um, height you, uh, you know, you're comfortable with, then if you've got that sort of uh, radius to the strings, then it shouldn't be too bad. Um, okay, so I can see a little bit uh, uh, what you are looking at now. Uh, so if, if you can see there that there's a little bit of a uh, of curve on the um, on the strings, uh, which you know roughly you follow the uh, radius of the uh, the fretboard. So that 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 should be uh, quite comfortable now to play. Um, so um, I've just bobbed the camera back uh, the way it was. And uh, what I'm going to do now is the intonation. And um, I'm not claiming to be uh, no expert on, on how this gets done. You might be able to see the tuning now. But basically what we want, um, if we set our uh, start on the 6th E string, if we get that uh, to the correct pitch, Unfortunately, at the moment, the, the strings are still stretching, so there's going to be a little bit of toing and froing. I get that to the correct pitch, and then what we need is when we press the 12th fret, we need it to be at the, at the same pitch. It's, it's going to be sort of uh, 12 frets higher, and that's that's showing at the 12th fret the um, the pitch is sharper than it is at the uh, as, as an open string and um, so that's the open string and then that's pressing at the 12th but we're quite a bit sharper there so that means we, we have to bring the bridge um, back towards the back of the guitar now um, at the moment these springs are pretty tight up uh, and when I did get the guitar um, the springs are actually on the other side of the block, so not not straight after the saddle, but on the other side of the actual uh, uh, plate itself. And it looks as though because because I need to move it so far back uh, to to get that um, to get that intonation, which is I'm gonna have to do the same with it. I did put the springs on on the correct. Um, side um, but I'm just not going to have enough leeway uh, leaving them where they are so I'm basically I think I'm going to have to take in order to get that 
delete in it I'm gonna have to take that spring off again I don't know if you can just quite see what I'm doing um, the, 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 the spring the spring which is uh, inside just there is now gonna have to come off and go on the back of the uh, the plate in order that I can get the saddle far enough back I think the only other option would be to, to, to bring the bridge itself back in order that uh, it, it, it brings the whole section back why it's like this uh, I don't know unless it's had a, a different neck on at some point but as far as I know it hasn't whether it's just because it's a cheaper guitar and, and, and it's not made you know it's not been made strictly to the right specs <laughs> I wouldn't have thought so with it being a, a fender but who knows so I've taken this the um, the screw out and put the spring just behind the head of the screw it's not ideal because um, I think the spring could have a tendency to actually pull over the screw head but I'm gonna to have to do this in order that I can get the intonation so I probably have to do this with each one but I'll show you basics of getting the intonation on the one string and then I'll have to go and do the, the rest off camera so this is allowing me now just to get that saddle right back as far as I possibly can um, need, we do need the string tension low enough as well to get that right back Okay, so that's right back right now back I'll show you in a second that's right that is right now back right to the uh, right to the uh, back as far as it will go on the uh, on the on the on the top up stand on the on the uh, plate uh, with the with the screw with the uh, spring and on, on that side which like I said I don't think it's ideal but I think it's the only way I'm going to get that much um, that much leeway so uh, I need to get this uh, east this bottom E back up to back up to its correct pitch which is about that you can still see that on the uh, it's probably not in the best position so okay so that's about on the zero and if we press now the 12 that's that's dead on so that's 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 your intonation open string and the 12 fret both coinciding in, in in exactly the same um, same place so it's probably maybe still slightly sharp actually but that block is as far back as I can possibly get it so um, I think even though it's a, a, a fraction out there it's going to have to be what it is without moving the bridge back I think um, which I don't really want to have to mess about with something like that very very slightly slightly sharp and if I press really hard on this on the string which I shouldn't need to do Yeah, very slightly, if anything. So, and I'm going to do. I'm going to have to do that. I think with at least the uh, the bottom E, the A, and the D string. Might get away with it with the uh, with the um, uh, unwound strings. Um, but I'll do these first, and then and then I'll take a look at those. So I'll do these off camera, um, and then uh, come back to you.
when uh, when I've done those. So there we are. We've uh, I've done the intonation, and um, as you can see, uh, the bottom E, the A, and the D. I've had to bring the springs onto this side in order to get the saddles fired back to intonate the guitar. Um, I got away with the E, B, and D, but you can see how uh, the E, B, and G. Sorry, you can see how how tight up this the spring is there. So. Um, Without uh, probably taking the whole bridge and bringing it back a little bit, which is probably more hassle than doing that's worth um, to get the same result. That's basically uh, how it's going to be. So the electrical issue. Um, I just re sort of soldered some of the. Um, and the soldering case had any dry joints, can't see anything wrong um, from uh, my uh, eye with the wiring but then again it's it's not something uh, I'm, I'm particularly good at and it's not within my skill set really doing the, the, the wiring and what have you so um, basically everything's working and we've got the different right up to the sort of in between um, the um, neck and the middle pickup but when it comes to the, the actual uh, neck pickup then I'm not getting anything uh, maybe uh, some, some of you guys can tell me just what's causing that I'm not 100% sure that's everything looked to be uh, wired as it was the only thing I can say is, is, is when I got the guitar, uh, that, that pickup wasn't working. And when I took the, the um, pick guard off and looked underneath, um, the, the magnet from that had actually come off and it was bridging between that pickup and that pickup. Um, once I um, got the magnet and, and glued it back on, uh, it might have been the other way around that, so it might have been this one that had come off, but whichever one it was, it was bridging between those two. Um, so basically, um, I took the magnet, stuck it back on the back of the pickup, and then when I tried the guitar again, the pickup worked fine. And the only thing I've done um, since then is take all the everything off this this pick guard, uh, of, sorry, everything off the old pick guard, and put it onto this one. Not mess with the wiring uh, or anything. So um, what's caused the issue? I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure, but maybe somebody can shed the, uh, some light on that for me. Uh, if you want to leave uh, a little message in the comments, um, I'll certainly uh, try and get to read everything. Uh, so yeah, basically um, that's about it. Apart from just one other small item, which um, is to um, Put the serial number back on the uh, back of the head box. I did take it off when I was uh, when I was uh, sort of refurbing this. I don't know what you think to this idea, but basically I put some stain on the headstock. Didn't want to do the neck. Maybe maybe I possibly should have done, but I've just done that with the. Uh, with the true oil if um, if you've been watching the earlier videos and basically you know it was in a bit of a mess was this a lot better than it was even even when it's like this and at the end of the day it's on the back so it's probably not going to be seen probably not not a specification as such for this so um i've got the original um The original um, serial number which I did stick onto another bit of wood which I'm peeling off now. So this this has this it, it is a little bit sticky is this but um I'm I've, I'm gonna get some super glue and, and super glue it on the back because uh, I don't think well well like I say it is still sticky it's probably a bit to be adequate actually. Uh, but I think I'm just going to bob a little bit of uh, glue on the back of that and uh, stick it on off, shall I not? Um, sh 
shall I not? So let's let's just see see what it does. So it'd be a shame to to lose it at some point. The only other th thing I could do is maybe just go over that with a little bit of lacquer, just to uh, just to hold it in place. But um, I thought it'd be all right. To tell you the truth. So there we go. Um, just turn it round. So that's the serial number. Um, I think uh, I'm not really sure on, on all the uh, gubbins um, what it all means, but I think it's um, the CA is for China, the 03 is for 2003, I believe um, the 05 is for the fifth month, and I'm not sure whether it's the 30th day in the 5th month and the 66th, um, not sure. I did look it up at some point, uh, but I've just forgotten what all those uh, mean. But um, I do remember that the CA was China and the O3 was 2003. So um, I'm sure if you wanted to look it up yourself, you could, uh, um, you could do that and just... Uh, see what's what so so there we are guys thanks for watching this uh, this series i hope um i hope it was interesting and i uh, hope you enjoyed it this wants another bit of a clean up now and a polish and um, and the uh, the protection taking off the uh, the pit guard and what have you so yeah uh, i'll try and do a, a video of this being played really badly by myself uh, um, and tag it on to the end of this uh, this video if I get a chance yeah uh, so that's about it guys thanks for watching if you liked everything and you'd like to subscribe uh, please do so and um, leave any uh, comments in the in the uh, comments box what you think of uh, what I've done whether it was worth it and um, probably if you watch the big the videos at right at the beginning you'll have seen the state it was in um prior to me starting this and I would have thought that you think uh, it's been worth the time and effort doing what I've done basically. I know for me um I'm happy that, that I've actually uh, done it. Uh, being furloughed and what have you has given me time to to do a lot of things that I wouldn't have normally been able to do, so it's, this is, is definitely uh, one of them. Um, so yeah, um, so if you liked uh, if you liked everything, please press the uh, like button. Thanks very much again for watching, and uh, I hope to see you again on the uh, next video. And uh, I'm sure there'll be one coming up because I have another project I'm working on. Uh, again, it was a cheap, uh, cheap guitar that I picked up for twenty pounds. Uh, uh, it was a, a, a Rockwood by Horner, and uh, done basically the same thing. Stripped everything down, done a few different little bits of, with the uh, uh, with the fretboard and the neck, uh, resprayed it. Um, and um, if you've enjoyed this one, please uh, uh, press the notification bell. And um, hopefully um, you'll be notified when that gets posted. So thank you very much.